Hello friends, let's get started by asking what is an equivalence relation? A relation on a set A is called an equivalence relation if it is reflexive, symmetric and transitive. So a relation have to be at the same time reflexive, symmetric and transitive for that relation to be an equivalence relation. Two elements A and B that are related by an equivalence relation are called equivalent. We denote A equal and B this way. Now we ask is the divides relation on the set of positive integers an equivalence relation? Turns out that it is not an equivalence relation because we have already seen in our types of relation video that this divides relation on the set of positive integers is both reflexive and transitive but not symmetric. Alright, since it's not reflexive, transitive and symmetric at the same time, divides relation is not an equivalence relation on the set of positive integers. Okay, let's see another question. Let R be the relation on set of real numbers such that A is related to B if and only if A minus B is an integer. The question is, is R an equivalence relation? Okay, let's see. Now you take any real number A, A minus A is going to be 0. 0 is an integer, right? So A is related to A. Now for all A, this is the case. And hence the relation is reflexive. Okay. Now suppose that A comma B belongs to the relation. Or in another words, A, A is related to B. Meaning that A minus B is an integer, right? Now A minus B is an integer implies that minus of A minus B is also an integer. It implies that B minus A is an integer. Implies that B is related to A or B comma A is in the relation. Implying that the relation is symmetric. Okay, now suppose that A comma B is in the relation and B comma C is in the relation. Implies that A minus B is an integer and B minus C is also an integer. Now when you add these two, the result is also should be an integer. So A minus B plus B minus C is an integer. Implies that A minus C is an integer implies that a comma c is in the relation or a is related to c so from a comma b belongs to r and b comma c belongs to r we got a comma c belongs to r hence the relation is also transitive so we got that relation is reflexive symmetric and transitive and hence the relation is an equivalence relation okay so let's see what is an equivalence class let r be an equivalence relation on set a the set of all elements that are related to an element small a of the set capital A is called the equivalence class of the element small a. The equivalence class of A with respect to R is denoted this way. A is written within square brackets and with a subscript R. When only one relation is under consideration, we can delete the subscript R and write only A within square brackets for denoting the equivalence class. In other words, if R is an equivalence relation on set A, the equivalence class of the element A is nothing but set of all S such that A comma S belongs to the relation R. It is nothing but the set of all elements to which the A is related, okay, using the relation R. So if B belongs to this equivalence class, then B is called a representative of this equivalence class. Any element of a class can be used as a representative of this class. So let's get to the subject equivalence classes and partitions. Let's look at an example. Let A be the set of students in your high school who are specializing or majoring in exactly one subject. Let R be the relation on the set A consisting of the ordered pairs x, y where x and y are the students in same major. So x and y are having same specialization. Okay. Now whether R is an equivalence relation or not. Let's see. So here x comma x belongs to R for all x because x and x are having same major, right? They both are same student. So they are having same specialization. So the relation is reflexive. Now suppose that x comma y belongs to the relation implying that x and y are having same major. Imply that y and x are also having same major. Now it implies that y comma x belongs to the relation. So turns out that the relation is also symmetric. 
Now suppose that x comma y and y comma z belongs to the relation, meaning that x is having same major as of y and y is having same major as of z. Now it implies that x and z are having same major, implies that x comma z belongs to the relation. So the relation turns out to be transitive as well. So reflexive, symmetric and transitive and hence the relation R is an equivalence relation here. Okay. So here we can see that the relation R splits all students in the set A into a collection of disjoint subsets where each subset contains students with a specified major. For instance, one subset containing all students majoring in computer science, just in computer science and second subset contains all students majoring in history and so on. If you see, these subsets are nothing but the equivalence classes of the relation R. This example illustrates how the equivalence classes of an equivalence relation partition a set into disjoint non-empty subsets. So let's prove a theorem here to make our discussion more precise and formal. So the theorem is that let R be an equivalence relation on set A. These statements for the elements small a and small b of the set capital A are equivalent. What are they? A related to B. Equivalence class of A equal to equivalence class of B. Equivalence class of A intersection equivalence class of B not equal to empty. Basically this theorem shows that the equivalence classes of two elements of a set A are either identical or disjoint. So let's get into the proof of the theorem. First we will prove that the statement 1 implies statement 2. A related to B implies that equivalence class of A equal to equivalence class of B. Now this is a conditional statement right. So P implies Q format. Now we assume that the hypothesis is true. So assume that A related to B is true. Now to prove that equivalence class of A equal to equivalence class of B we will show that say, equivalence class of A is a subset of equivalence class of B and equivalence class of B is a subset of equivalence class of A. Okay, then we say that equivalence class of A is same as equivalence class of B. Now suppose that C is an element of the equivalence class of A. It implies that A related to C, right, from the definition of the equivalence class. Now R is symmetric because we know that the relation R is equivalence, we have proved it, right. So R is symmetric implies that B is related to A because we already assumed that A is related to B and R is symmetric, we get that B is related to A. Now B is related to A and A is related to C. Since R is also transitive, we get that B is related to C. When B is related to C, it means that C is an element of the equivalence class of B. From where we assumed C is an element of equivalence class of A, we arrived at C is an element of equivalence class of B. Hence we conclude that equivalence class of A is a subset of equivalence class of B. Now proceeding in a similar manner we can prove that equivalence class of B is a subset of equivalence class of A. Together concluding that equivalence class of A equal to equivalence class of B. Now we have proved that A related to B implies equivalence class of A equal to equivalence class of B. Now we will show that statement 2 implies statement 3. Equivalence class of A equal to equivalence class of B implies that the intersection between these two equivalence classes is not empty. As a first step, let's assume that equivalence class of A equal to equivalence class of B. Now it means that equivalence class of A intersection equivalence class of B is not empty because the equivalence class of A is not an empty set. Why? Because A is an element of equivalence class of A as a comma a is in the relation because the relation r is reflexive right and hence we get that intersection of these two equivalence classes is not empty so we have proved statement 2 implies statement 3 also now we show that statement 3 implies statement 1 intersection of the equivalence class of a and b is not empty implies that a is related to b okay let's assume that equivalence class of A intersection equivalence class of B is non-empty. Now meaning that there exists an element C which belongs to the equivalence class of A and also belongs to the equivalence class of B. 
meaning that a is related to c and b is related to c from the definition of equivalence class okay now since r is symmetric we get that b related to c means c is also related to b okay now we have a related to c comma c related to b since r is transitive we get that a is related to b from these two now that's what we wanted right we assumed the intersection of these two equivalence classes is non empty and we arrived at the conclusion that a is related to b hence we shown that statement 3 implies statement 1 also so we have shown that statement 1 implies statement 2 statement 2 implies statement 3 statement 3 implies statement 1 and hence we have proved the theorem a partition of a set s is nothing but the collection of the disjoint non empty subsets of s where all of their union is the set s itself now we are in a position to show how an equivalence relation partitions a set okay let r be an equivalence relation on set a the union of the equivalence classes of the relation r is all of the set a as an element small a of the set capital a is in its own equivalence class right so the union of the equivalence class of the relation r is all of the set a now it is denoted this way union of all small a belongs to capital a equivalence class is nothing but the set capital a okay now from the theorem we know that equivalence classes are either equal or disjoint because the theorem says that when a and b are related it means that their equivalence classes are same equivalence class of a is same as equivalence class of b now when the equivalence class are same it means that the intersection between them cannot be empty meaning that the equivalence class of a and the equivalence class of b cannot be disjoint so when the equivalence class are equal they cannot be disjoint and when they are disjoint they cannot be equal okay that's what it means so they are either equal or disjoint so when equivalence class of a is not equal to the equivalence class of b it means that equivalence class of a intersection equivalence class of b is empty these two observations show that the equivalence classes form a partition of the set a because they split the set a into disjoint subsets so a partition of a set s looks like this so we have all the disjoint subsets of the set s and disjoint means their intersection is empty right so that's when we call sets as disjoint okay and uh, now if you take the union of all these disjoint subsets we get the set s itself that's that's what a partition means okay so far we have seen that equivalence classes of an equivalence relation on a set forms a partition of the set right equivalence classes forms a partition of the set that's what we have seen so far the subsets in the partition are the equivalence classes here now we are going to prove that every partition of a set can be used to form an equivalence relation two elements are equivalent with respect to this relation if and only if they are in the same subset of the partition all right so we call two elements equivalent with respect to this relation if and only if they are in the same subset of the partition to see this assume that set of all ai such that i belongs to the index set i is a partition on the set s let r be the relation on set s consisting of the pairs x comma y where x and y belong to the same subset ai in the partition okay so the relation is defined this way x and y are related when x and y belong to the same subset ai in the partition now we can easily show that r is an equivalence relation r is an equivalence relation we will prove by proving that r is reflexive symmetric and transitive so i leave this as an exercise so you guys can do prove that r is an equivalence relation here so we have our concluding statements regarding equivalence classes and partition let r be an equivalence relation on a set s then the equivalence classes of the relation r forms a partition of set s conversely given a partition set of all ais of the set s 
there is an equivalence relation R that has a subset AI as its equivalence classes. Thank <laughs> you.